Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm really happy that you chose to spend this Friday evening with us. It's going to be a truly spectacular event. And from the patience you've already shown, I can tell you guys are going to be a spectacular audience. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. It's a real rare occasion to be able to lift the curtain and see behind the life of one of our lifetime's strongest change makers by meeting the parents of Malala. Zayuddin Yusufzai and Thurpaki Yusufzai are proud parents of Malala who was forced on the international stage in October 2012 when she was shot on her way back from school after taking an exam by an extremist who opposed her advocacy for education. Such a tragedy is very rarely felt by one individual. It has a ripple effect that impacts the entire family. And this ripple was felt globally. My name is Manal Omar, the founder of Across Red Lines, and I'm really honored to be the moderator for this session and to listen with you with this amazing, spectacular journey. This violent act was meant to intimidate and deter the Yusufzai family from their dedication towards education, but it had the opposite effect. Instead, they used it as fuel to continue their advocacy for education, not only in their homeland of Pakistan, but truly worldwide. The popular civil rights activist Malik al-Shabazz, also known as Malcolm X, has said that, the pa that education is the passport to the future. It is those who pre prepare for it today that are ready for tomorrow. And with the theme of tomorrow as the 12th anniversary of the Emirates Airline Literature F Festival of Literature, what better family to represent both the power of education and also not to take tomorrow for granted. This didn't just start with the tragedy. In fact, I would argue that education is in Zayuddin's blood. It's part of his ancestral heritage. It was also his father who was a teacher of theology in a government high school who also founded schools. And like every next generation, Zayuddin carried on the torch and he founded a school for girls and boys in Pakistan. Just like his daughter, Malala, the next generation, takes it one step further by bringing this call for global education and access for all to the global arena. And what's already a powerful event is even more enhanced by the presence of her mother, Thurpakai, who in herself has avoided the spotlight until recently, instead focusing on being that pillar of support behind the scenes. But her contribution to the family cannot be overestimated. The pain of a mother standing by her daughter as she's fighting for her life in itself sets off a ripple effect of a primordial energy that really creates a powerful change in itself. She also reminds us that education is not just a formal setting. When she arrived in Birmingham, she bravely went to adjust and study English. And in one of the articles, she reminded us of the power of the small wins, the power she felt when she was able to book her own doctor's appointment or read the grocery signs in the store. Again, showing us the power of education is always a lifelong journey. This family truly represents that transformative energy of education. It represents that education is a state of being, of when a person is able to approach open-minded towards enlightenment, towards, towards enlightenment and towards knowledge. Please join me as we welcome this amazing family to the stage for a conversation that I confidently promise you will be both inspiring and transformative for you as well. 
I also want to just reassure the audience that we will save time for questions and answers in the end, because one of the most powerful part of this is definitely going to be that interaction with the couple, and there'll be a book signing uh, afterwards. So again, please welcome the amazing Yusuf Sai family to the stage. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here and to be moderating this session. I wanted to start off with a general question, because when you see someone like Malala, at least for me, the first question is, who are the parents that raised her? Having gone through the journey, what lessons would you like to share with the audience and with other parents about your style of parenthood? Uh, my name is Dorita Yusufzai. I come from Pakistan. I have three children, one daughter and two sons. I live in the in Birmingham. Uh, he's my husband. True. <laughs> he's a very nice man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what would you like to share in terms of you know that background of raising Malala? Malala, ma khbal bachu ta da wali bi. درو وړ بچو ته چې تاسو به همیشه رښتیا وای او خپل د حق ته پر باواز چته وای او ټول خل برابرتیا به غواړي چې تاسو یو شانی الگ او جنی برابری کته هر قسم خلکی کنا د رنگ فرق بوم نه کوي د نسب فرق بوم نه کوي او همیشه به رښتیا وای درو بنه وای ځکه چې ملاله وړه ولا ماشوم وانو د زمنګه ګاونډیانو Malala, awal agak jinai lagi dalam ibadah Malala ini, cerita na beriu. Dia Malala lagi dalam ibadah agi ni raya beriu. Dia agi mur matu beri cerita si Malala lagi dalam ibadah zaman masyumi nai, wale malai dah raya beri di. Zuri raya fah shoma. Mama Malala kini no lemai Malala dah tak kahani dikeli. Agi matu beri cerita agi awal zaman na beri. Mama khair tu pada badu siyali nakai. Agi tan beri di. Ho agi mu kahani dikeli. Ho tapi agi kahani dikeli cerita agi na. دا بدل واقع است و داغی ندی سامان را ورد. و تا بتا سو به همیشه رشته وای. و ملاله بیا و ما خو رشوه دار رشوه. ملاله چی دن و غلطی با خبال با جون کی یو پیرا کرد. لبیا با دوباره غلطی بیا غی ندا کردی. نوزه بیم چه خبال ماشومان آورای خب غوار سر آورای. تا پوستی که وای. او آقو خبری تا پریده چی آقو سوی. نو اکثر من ماشوم خالق داغ کی وی یاری چی دا خبر با بیا نکای. نو بیا غم ماشوم خبال خبر نیشی کولی. نو زمان دار میشه دی که خبال ماشوم آوری، او در رشته او خدا غوار تخیه ای که همیشه رشته اوه، او خبال خبال حق واره، پکور کم واره، بهارم واره، خبال خبر خب، پدر از لبان دیکه وای. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. السلام علیکم. Uh, Turpike introduced herself, so let me introduce myself as well. I am uh, Ziaudin Yusuf Zai, and um, I am an equal partner of Turpike. An equal partner of Turpike. Uh, I have two feminist sons, Kushal and Atal. Beautiful. Uh, and I have one daughter, Malala Yusuf Zai. Uh, uh, like uh, first. Um, she was my daughter, and now I am her father. Uh, in patriarchal societies, uh, fathers are known by sons, but I am one of the few who is known by his daughter, and I'm so proud of it. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the question that, uh, how, what did we do for our children? So adding to Torpeke's, and uh, like what she said, I totally agree with that. Uh, we try to teach our children to be truthful and to be honest and to raise their voice when they, their basic rights are violated or they are discriminated. <coughs> also, um, we were a very like, uh, I should not use the word poor, but uh, we were a family with uh, very uh, uh, few resources like uh, uh, not rich people. Uh, though economically we were not rich and wealthy, but in terms of values, this small family of five people were extremely rich. 
And uh, what I could teach me and Torpeke together uh, could teach to our children like love, respect, empathy, so important. So I sometimes think that what we taught in adversity or in that poverty, maybe if we had been rich, we wouldn't have taught that. Mm. Um, adding to that, just to say that what we did, and I will just go back to my own quote, which I always say that people ask me what special I did in mentorship or in raising a daughter who is poised, calm, and bold. Uh, and I tell them, don't ask me what I did. Rather than ask me what I did not do, I did not clip her wings. Hmm. So that's the message. Thank you. That, that's a very powerful message. And Thorpaki, uh, for you as a young girl, uh, you yourself were denied education. How did that shape your experience, and especially your experience as a mother? موسیقی او ده سکول تعلیم دیر ضروری ده تعلیم رانه دا تعلیم تیاره ختمی او زمین ما چی پاله که جنی که ایس فرق نیسته یا ده تعلیم فرق ته که ما تعلیم کرده وی می زبانن یا با تیچرام یا با دکترام یا با اینجی زه هر سه که دیاشو ما کنن زه سنجا چی زه دل تخلق بی نم با دیمال کنن که چی آقا خزی دی پایلاتی دی بسونه چلی پلیسی دی فوجیانی دی نو دست مامو هر سه که ولی شو خب من تا آقا موقعی میل آو نشولی زد دی و جن زد زدی را خفای ما او مات لگ تعلیم پروژه جون گرانو مو او تعلیم پروژه منی جون داشت نه چی سر زرالم بهار ملک تا مات دلت گران شو مات با پاکستان کی بام گرانو زد دیر هر خبر خدا نه وچه با پختو کی وگه تبیانگ تلی کو خبر دغدی نپی جندو دیتا بر بدی نپی جندو دکتر چیت بن نپی جندو کل کل با خال کل کا زد خبیام یا ودی سیفی میلی کی سر زمان وادو شو چی زمان خوان جو آگا دیر خودیل هر هیل فلو زمان دیر مدد پی کاو او بال داده جب ما پا بندی نو از بر دکتر لذان یوازی اتلم بازار تبدیل ما مدت خلق سر دیر مندی ترلی و حالی نو دیر لک داده سی دیر احساس نکی تو زک اخبیام خبال وطن و خو بیام ما مارمان راتو او بیا چیز کل بر میگم تر عالما نو بیا خود زمان جون دیر گران شو زک چی آگا ناشنا ملکو او کلچر جدا و جب جدا و از پس ایسام نپویه دما زبادی را خفاف ما بادی زیاد جدالو یه ورز ما بیاس پنج می ما ولی دلا نمایی چیز از جداشو ما مایی چیز پنج می جواب تیج تیجوشانی نور دل تهر سب دل دی نو زمان تعلیم بیان بیا سخت نخو منگه تیرشی و پل وطن پایتی شوی پایتی شوی وطن دیر خوبو خوب ایدا تعلیم دشی ایدا است مارگری دیدا تا سر. داتا لالاس را کی پهار زی کی لکه دا تبچه بانی تاوان نی تا سر ای سوکم نی خدا است ادیسی او مرگری دی دا سر پهار لار زی. Thank you. Hey, the honor. I mean, the the real courage to learn a new language in a foreign country. It it really shines through. Thank you. Zayedin, as I mentioned, we and the world got to know about your family story in 2012, but this recent book uh, really sheds light on your own experience and your own childhood. Can you share kind of the summary of what from your childhood really prepared you for this path? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Basically, the book Let Her Fly, as its title shows, mm -hmm. my son uh, complained to me that why just let her fly? You should say let them fly. <laughs> uh, he's very cheeky, and I told him that you people are already flying for centuries. True. Now let girls fly. <laughs> uh, I grew up in a family of five sisters and a brother uh, in the northwest of Pakistan, Khaybar, Pukhtunkhwa, Shangla. And um, uh, I could see that growing up as a boy, how like privileged I was being a boy 
I could see that I get milk cream with my tea in the morning while my sisters had not that privilege. I could see that um, when chicken was cooked, so the sumptuous part of the chicken was given to the men and the bony were left for the girls because we were men. And then I could see that I had a more a pair of shoes and better clothes as compared to my sisters. So then the worst discrimination uh, that really crippled my sister's future uh, was deprivation from education. And um, to be honest, I should not blame my parents for that. The government at that time, and even today, it was very patriarchal. Mm. Patriarchal government, uh, when they do a lot of investment for boys' education and for men's uh, development uh, and social uplift, but there are few projects for girls. So there were hardly any school for girls. Uh, and that was the reason that it was a typical patriarchy. My parents had big dreams uh, for me. They wanted to see me a doctor, a very influential person, maybe a rich person as well. Uh, but for my five sisters, their only dream was to get them married uh, as early as possible. Uh, and that changed uh, my mind, diff like it made me, because I was very thankful to my father. Um, he was a great speaker, and my mother too, though she was an illiterate uh, herself, but I remember that when I used to study in the light of a lantern, so she used to walk outside my room that lest I should burn myself with fire. And uh, my father used to tell me that this world is like an open book. Read my son everything. So the indigenous wisdom that he gave me, it was amazing. So. Uh, Education was something that changed me, that transformed me, and really it was a compliment. You say that it's in, in, in the blood, in the blood of mine, uh, that uh, uh, the education, the, the, the experience of education, uh, the, 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 the transition and the transformation uh, because of education is such an amazing thing that I have experienced in my life. Mm -hmm. And together, me and Thor uh, like, to be honest, saying that if there had been no Torpekai, there wouldn't have been any Ziauddin, any M M M Malala. Um, uh, together we were able, uh, because both of us grew up in a very typical patriarchal family, uh, but uh, we together were able, sharing the values of equality, we were able to create a family that believed in equality, an egalitarian family. Uh, so. Uh, that was like education transformed me. It changed me into the kind of person that I am. And it uh, changed my inner being. It made my inner being just fear and beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. And, and that really shines through your book. And, you know, I can't help but wonder, Thur Pakai, um, as you hear these words, and I've heard Malala say the same thing about the impact you've had on their lives. And I think all of us, when we see you, you know, one of the first you know, words is resilience. Uh, what's your personal secret to resilience and to supporting the family? You know, when the Taliban the موږ <laughs> موسیقی Thank you. Thank you. 
چی سهار و خلق پاسی دنو پچوکتی و دو دری کس با یال الکلی و آگاه با یال تگزاره لیو نو ما ما با یه چی داخ ما تو خلق کو تلفونی ناو کرده چی تا خبر خوان تو وای چی داخ خبری ما که وای که داری ارزیات خطرناک وقتی دیا با سوک مرکی او دیدی داخ خبری نکی ما ایدا خبر ما با وقت و خا خاتیک نت اس خواهی خو ما با ایدا با سوک کی چه مونگا چپ شو چی دا داخ خبر با سوک کی دا زولم مونگ سنگ بینو مونگ منشولی دل ایلا که مونگ با دیر جنرال دیر با خف کی تو چه مونگا کلا داخ خبر او کردی زم مونگ زلاب داغش مطمئن شو زم مونگ زلاب داغش مونگا خال و سوکو Thank you, Thurpa Kai, for reminding us of, uh, well, first, thank you for raising that voice and reminding us of that power of faith. Uh, Sayadeen, you've already said, and, and one of my favorite things that I've read in your, your quotes is the idea of not clipping her wings. Yes. I want to hear more. Tell me what that means and what that looked like. Yeah, as I mentioned already, like um, uh, adding to the earlier part of my answer that the very title of the book is Let Her Fly. And I gave a TED talk in Vancouver a few years ago, and I closed it with my quote um, that um, I did not clip her wings. So a friend told me that why not put it positively, let her fly. So that became the title of my book. And um, uh, as I said, that uh, I could see that how education was important and how it changed me, and if I wanted to see a different future for my daughter, then my sisters are Torpekai and Torpekai's sisters, the only dream we had was an education. And um, uh, like, uh, right from the very beginning, even when Malala was not born, I had a name for her, and that was Malala of Mavand. Uh, the famous legendary Afghan heroine who raised her voice in the second Anglo-Afghan war. So for me, that name was very interesting because of the two reasons uh, that name inspired me. Number one, that she was known by her own name, uh, not by a father's name, a brother's name, a son's name. And number two, she raised her voice in a very difficult time. So I named Malala after the Malala of Mevan. And uh, later, when she was born, a few weeks after, my cousin brought me the family tree. And when I looked at the family tree, it was a list of men for 400 years, fathers, great fathers, great grandfathers, and so on and so forth. And what I did, I picked up my pen and like, drew a line from my name and wrote Malala. So I can say that I was a feminist long before I knew the word feminism. Uh, and that's why uh, all our uh, expectation and our dreams were pinned on education. So if I wanted to see my daughter, a girl with her own identity, with somebody who could be herself, with somebody who can choose her future herself, the only key that was education. And just imagine that when you have these big dreams for your child and like few, like some bigot or some extremists, they come, they appear in the area, in the valley, Swat Valley, that has been called the Switzerland of the East by the Queen of England. And such a beautiful land, we had a very happy life. And some people say, no education, no girls' education no modern education. And when, just imagine that you are being told that uh, uh, girls and women are not supposed to be going to the marketplaces. And when, you, and when you hear in the news that every day three, four schools are being bombed, are burnt, more than 400 schools were burnt. Mm. So in that situation, uh, we had to raise our voice. Uh, and uh, that's why, uh, I could not resist, like it was dangerous to speak in the time of Taliban, but it was more dangerous not to speak against Taliban because we could not live in that subjugation, being deprived from our basic rights forever. Mm. Uh, so that's why I say that if we want girls to fly, especially in patriarchal societies, if we want girls to be emancipated, if we want them to be free, if we want them to be themselves, so 
education, education, education. Absolutely. I, I have to say, um, listening to you speak and hearing the story of the meaning of the name Malala, I can't help but think that you're not only a feminist, but what I would argue is a, a synonym for the word feminism. You're really a visionary to know that so far in advance, so thank you. Uh, again, I'm so excited and I think we're really excited in the sense that you've avoided the spotlight before to, you know, before until recently and uh, I wonder, you know, what has that spotlight on your family? How has it affected you and how have you coped with it? normal <laughs> different <laughs> Pakistan Thank you. <laughs> Great. Do you have anything else to say? Please continue. Yeah, yes, please. And this is Doctor Thank you. Thank you. And the final question, and so please prepare your questions, because like I said, I want to try and save as much time for you, the, the audience, as possible. But, you know, for us, those of us who are a little obsessed with the superhero story, uh, there's always a dark part of what we call the origin story. And I think for your family, 2012 was that dark moment. And yet, for me, and I'm sure for many of us in the audience, you provide such hope and such inspiration that I can't help but wonder where do you pull your source of hope and where do you find a place to refuel for your inspiration? Uh, thank you. <clears throat> of course, yeah. I mean, especially this book, it's a story of transformation, uh, as I already mentioned, from one generation to a different generation. Uh, for, from patriarchy to e equality, but also this book tells about our, the difficult part uh, that we took in our life when uh, there was ban on girls' education and in our family, like father, like daughter, I raised my voice, Malala raised our voice. Um, and uh, then what happened to her, I mean, she was not only my friend, uh, like only companion, daughter, everything. She was like, as I mentioned, like one soul in two bodies. It was a difficult time. So it covers all that story of ups and downs in our life. And like the girl who was speaking for 50,000 girls when uh, uh, girls' education was banned, now she is raising her voice for 130 million girls all around the world. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. 
what, what keeps on going and what inspires us so, like when I hear a story that in my hometown in Shangla, there are 250 girls, a school has been established by Malala Nobel Peace Prize money, and now 250 girls, it's the first generation of girls who are getting quality education. And last summer, when the director of school said that we will have summer vacations, girl, girls went to her office and said, please don't close the school, we want to be in school. Uh, and when I hear these great stories, like from Nigeria, uh, we, the, for, uh, our foundation, uh, the Malala Fund has uh, champions uh, in almost 10 countries. Uh, we have uh, 60 champions, and these champions are doing amazing advocacy for girls' education in Afghanistan, in India, in Pakistan, uh, in Syrian region, um, and uh, in Eth Ethiopia. So, like when we hear the stories that in the north of Nigeria, two of our champions, they were able to do education for girls' education, and they talked to the government education department, and they eliminated the tuition fee for the secondary students, and they benefited 200,000 children. So these are the news that every day we do a little bit, and then the dream and the hope that Malala had before the attack. Like, even she met when she was in grade nine, she gathered her class fellows, and she made a foundation in school, that Malala Foundation. Wow. And she wanted, because she said that Taliban is not the only reason, there are other barriers to girls' education, domestic child labor, poverty, social taboos, conflict is one of them. So she wanted to do more for girls, mm. and their journey that started from there, so our first choice was to be uh, education campaigners in our own community. Mm. But circumstances brought us to a different level, to a different place, but I mean, uh, it was Malala's resilience and her courage. Uh, and I always still date there in Swat, I was a kind of leader in the community and she rather inspired by me, was my co-friend in doing things. Now she is a leader on the global stage and I am one of her millions of supporters. <laughs> She's my leader. So uh, every day we hear great stories about uh, betterment, more girls in school, uh, and it makes us so happy and the dream comes through that, yes, a day will come that we will see every girl in every part of the world that she will have an access to quality of free, safe, at least 12 years of education, and every girl would be able to choose her future herself. Oh, powerful. Thank you both for such powerful words and such a powerful initiative. And, and I'm a huge believer in the Karma Bank. So, you know, as I think about what's in store for your family and from the Islamic perspective, we call it Sadaqa Jariya when it comes to education, which is long-term charity beyond lifetime. So, I, you know, I look forward to hearing more and more about the rewards for the work that you do. Uh, like I promised, I want to turn to the audience. Please, if you have a question, I see one right up here. We have the runner, it's behind you. Great, I see you. Hello, assalamu uh, My question is, and as you mentioned in the beginning, your sons were quite cheeky and they said, why don't you name your book, Let Them Fly? So I'm very interested to know, like, how do you maintain the balance at home with your sons when the spotlight is on Malala? Like, of course, they're coming from your family and they will value education, it's in their blood too. But how do you maintain the balance with your two boys and Malala? Great question. Yeah, I mean, most often people ask me and they are concerned that it's, I mean, uh, a real concern that how a girl who is like become famous and popular and known all over the world and there are two boys in the same family, so how will be their feeling? And they say that they might be in the shadow of Malala. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must tell you that uh, the family environment, such a friendly environment, democratic environment to be honest, uh, that, that my two sons, they are not living in uh, her shadow, rather they are in her sunshine. Oh, fabulous. Uh, they, they are so happy 
And Torpike, you sometimes tell a story that when Malala stood second and something. Okay, yeah. I give it to her, yeah. कलेज मलाला खुशाल द्वारा स्कूल तत्लल खुशाल मलाला हमेशा फर्स्ट नंबर रहता दा खुशाल वजह से सलोरम पिंजम रहता हो बता गजल बने खुशाल आतम नंबर रह गले वा मलाल उद्यम रह गले वा खुशाल कोर तरह के नु जाड़ी माय लक तवली जाड़ी वही मलाल उद्यम नंबर रह गल दा माय तो स्वयं रह गले जातम माय तातम र So there's wow. so that's, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. Have a question behind, and then we'll jump over here. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Malala has been well deserved, got the Nobel Peace Prize. But after this small interaction, I think you, as parents of a brave girl, should be nominated for 2020 Nobel Peace Prize to bring up such a brave daughter. Absolutely. I'm that, sure. And I'll say something in Indian Urdu you can understand, but up Bahadur Beti ka jo up Maab up Ami hai, uske liye main salam karta chahta hoon. I salute you all. God bless. Uh, besides, I come from India, where you so call it an emanation in brackets. I don't mean that. But have you ever thought of coming to India because you could be ambassadors of peace to come to our country, and you know get all this media hate. It's not it's not just necessary to be educated, but to read the right kind of literature that goes across the borders. And I think if you be good ambassadors, come to India sometime. And you know, educate and tell you that it's not uh, the border, it's just the border that revives us, but how about coming and inspiring us, besides your daughter, as parents, as like, you know, inspire peace and togetherness and everything else. I hope, have you ever thought of coming to India? That's what I want to know. I'm eager to know that. Uh, is visa a problem or is this something? <laughs> I, okay. I, I totally agree with you. Thank you so much for your compliment. Uh, yeah. And I feel humbled. We feel humbled. Thank you. Um, as far as India and Pakistan, we are neighbors. Also, when Malala was uh, getting Nobel Peace Prize, she got it with a co-laureate, Kailash Satyarthi, who has hugely contributed to free children from slavery. And Malala and Kailash were together receiving their Nobel Peace Prize. And that was an occasion that Malala invited the Prime Minister of Pakistan in India that you both should come. So that was an effort that didn't happen. Uh, but Kailash told M M M Malala that uh, you may or may not know, but you are more popular than me in India. <laughs> uh, so this is very interesting, these two countries, which makes like a huge population of this world, uh, like, uh, uh, more than a billion is India, and uh, like um, uh, uh, there are 200 plus million people in Pakistan. So peace for us is the prerequisite of progress uh, and moving forward. Um, conflict will not benefit anyone. I totally agree with you. Um, and uh, just one story that a girl who was five years old, uh, in, in grade five, sorry, in grade five, like 10 years old maybe, she wrote to M M Malala, uh, and when I opened her letter, uh, so she, it was beautifully, she said that, uh, look, Malala, first you wanted to like, become a doctor, so I also wanted to become a doctor. No, I heard that you want to become a politician, so I also want to become a politician. And one day, these are children's dream, look, one day I will be the Prime Minister of India, and you will be the Prime Minister of Pakistan, and we will bring peace. I, I had tears in my eyes that how much our children wish to have peace in that uh, land. Uh, so, and I don't know who told you that we are planning to come to India. So we have a plan to come to India because uh, uh, we have like the highest number of champions for girls' education are in India. So uh, uh, I'm with you. That's Thank you. Wonderful news. Great. Thank you. Um, my runner is, is helping to make sure the I back will, is covered, uh, so we'll I will go appreciate back questions for Torpe, okay? because uh, okay. I speak for so long, I wish she could. Okay. So if a question for her, I will. Hi, okay. at the back. Yes. Hi, it's Sarah from the Possibilities Project. We approached you to ask whether Malala would contribute to our book, and like a very good father, you told us no, because it's her final year of university and she was too busy. Uh, so you kindly contributed instead, thank you. But what I wanted to ask you was, obviously with her graduating this year, what is next for Malala, but also what is next for the Malala Fund, and what does it mean now that she is sort of looking to end her university career? 
Thank you. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this is her final year in uh, Oxford, and uh, she is doing PPE, Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Um, and she has changed a lot uh, after being in Oxford. Uh, socially changed too much, so I'm so happy for that. Uh, what she will be doing next, really, it will be her decision, uh, her plans. Um, somebody asked me that, what are your dreams for her? Uh, so I uh, replied that, oh, when she was very little, I had dreams that she should be independent and free and blah, 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 blah. But now she's an adult. Even I don't go with her on tours. She's on her own with her team. So it's hard to dream for herself. We parents, we just pray for her. And about the Malala Fund, so as I mentioned, that we have great uh, projects uh, in the countries uh, where we see that most, a big number of girls are not in school. Like only three countries, India, Nigeria, and Pakistan, they make 40% of the girls' population who are not in school. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is big, but not big. It's, it's easy to reach to these countries and work there and to ensure that girls have access to education. Thank you, that's wonderful. I think that we have, so, I, I'm sorry, the light is blinding me. Where is the mic? Okay, so I, I think we have one more back, but I promise you, thank you for your patience. It's gonna come back forward. So after we're done, we'll bring it back forward. So, but I see that it's a young girl, so we wanted to give the opportunity for her to ask a question, please. So I've been, listening to Malala's speech since I was six, and I have a question. So, when can I meet Malala, and how can I meet her? Ah. <laughs> and how old you are now? How old Nine. Are you? Nine, brilliant, we should clap for you. You're so brave, <laughs> so brave, so brave. This is what I did for 18 years in the Swat Valley. I had been teacher for 18 years, and what of the, one of the beautiful things I miss from life in SWAT, that when I used to move from classroom to classroom, and sharing things with the student, and hearing from them, and then seeing this, like shining on their faces when they learn something new. Thank you so much for reminding me <laughs> uh, of my being a teacher, and yes, you are welcome to Birmingham, okay? <laughs> Whenever you come, you are most welcome. And if we come to Abu Dhabi, so to D D D Dubai, um, we can meet you here, okay? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Right, and we're bringing the mic forward right here. Actually, if you can stand up, because I know you know who I'm talking about, so go ahead and sit up just so that she knows where to bring the mic. Up front here, there we go. Thank you. And thanks again for your patience. It's such an honor to, to be here and share this room with you today. Um, I read uh, about, uh, I read Malala's book uh, when, uh, when it was published initially and I was very, very influenced uh, by her. Uh, my father, we, we, have two we have two daughters, we have two sisters and my father has always been, you know, an advocate of uh, girls' education. Um, my, my question was what she had already asked about how, how her brothers are and you know, how do they feel in the limelight of uh, Malala. But uh, another question is like, how, how is she in her day-to-day -day life? You know, she, she's now a celebrity, you know. Does, does she, is she a normal person at home or you know, does she have celebrity status at home or what happens when she steps out? Does she go to the supermarket? You know, what's her day-to-day? -day? Like, you know, is she a normal person? Yeah. Yeah. ترکیه <laughs> نو هغه به خپل ځي او بازار ډیر نه خو او ملاله کې تاسو خو نه شته دی چې هغه ځان لوی وګڼي یا ځان فیمس وګڼي هغه ډیر دا غې ډیر خو خوې دی ملاله اوکی یا 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 یا
openness in the family, so it keeps, and also the two brothers fight with her, <laughs> re reminding her that, okay, <laughs> it's all right. When she uh, got the Nobel Peace Prize, so the, my younger son told her, uh, Johnny Malala, we know that you have got this Nobel Peace Prize, but it doesn't mean that you now become a big bossy sister. <laughs> so this kind of uh, things go on the family. So, thank you. I love that the family keeps each other real. That's yeah, really yeah, yeah. Powerful. Thank you so much. <laughs> this um, is going to be the last question. I know that you, everyone is so eager to ask a question, um, but there is going to be a book signing afterwards. So please, you know, be patient and forgive me as the moderator for, for not being able to call on everyone. But please go ahead. What an honor and what a great evening. Um, let me, I just want to share one thing. I think the credit goes to the parents. My mother was born in Srinagar. She went to school uh, in fourth class. Uh, one of the girls ran away with a sick teacher. So my mamu said, no school for you, never. So she never went to school. So when she moved to Pakistan, she barely could read a newspaper, but she stood up for us that we, I have to educate my girls. Okay. And she kept um, my son, who was Thank one you. year old, with her for me to go to States to get my post-graduation. And, Thank you know, you. everybody was shocked that how can you keep a seven-month-old son for a year? Thank you. Do, you. do you have a question for so him? So I have a question. Um, is, is all the family, other sisters uh, in her family, uh, they are, they, their children are going ahead like Malala or, you know, are, were they able to achieve the same thing? Thank you. What a great question. Yes. Uh, 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 I was a little bit of 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 ada pa ki loya da da pesha wali university ta ragal da zamung da zamung da zama da plar da kili awal jinay da chi da ragal da university ta aw talim de ziyad zaruri de zaba da khabar au kama chi kala mor a plar chi no bache da school na ra shi homework wali chi kai no chi kala mor talim nahi kare ma no kare no zaba na po ye da ma no was za chi kala class na ra shi ragal ma mala le zama zama homework chi kai she tells him from Mark Cracker, the Rashamato Haya. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, this does bring us to the end of the session. But before we go to the signing of the book, before we head to the lobby of the book signing, please allow me to thank a few people. First, I really do want to thank you, the audience. Thank you for being so interactive and, again, so patient for those who didn't have questions answered. I want to thank the AV team, the volunteers, and the translators who make such a you know, multicultural dialogue possible. I want to thank our title sponsor, Emirates Airline, our founding partner, Dubai Culture, our parent organization, the Emirates Liter Literature Foundation, and our session sponsor, the Dubai Duty Free. But most importantly, I really want to thank our speakers. And I know how nervous Thur Prakai was about being here and speaking, but your presence alone has such a powerful message to us all. So thank you both. Please join me in welcoming, thanking them. Thank you.